I very much like the principles in the Liber Land Constitution, uh, individual rights, non-aggression, limits on government. Uh, I'm going to reinforce and elaborate and nuance some of those ideas this morning. Uh, we want to keep the Constitution and all of Liberland's laws and regulations as brief, lightweight, and economical as possible. Uh, I'm reminded of the Icelandic Parliament, which lasted for almost a millennium. Hey, until, will be about five in less than ten minutes. Uh, until 1944. One of its features was that one individual had to be able to recall and recite the entire body of law. And I think that simplicity of the law uh, that was that this necessitated contributed directly to the parliament's longevity. So if Liberland can emulate uh, Iceland uh, in that Iceland's history in that regard, I think it will bode very well for Liberland. Next slide, please. Uh, economies and societies are complex adaptive systems. What do I mean by that? I mean, order arises bottom through self-organization. People give rise to customs in order to avoid conflict and to uh, find mutual benefit. Buyers and sellers give wages to wages and prices, companies to supply chains and industries. None of these are controlled from the top down. Freedom is necessary for innovation. That gives way to progress. Uh, uh, complex adaptive systems are unpredictable because of such things as network effects. Uh, and if we try to constrain them from the top down, we get barriers to entry and cronyism. So if we can work within and take advantage of the, uh, this framework as much as possible, uh, we're most likely to be successful. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, economies and societies are, are already regulated organically through customs, markets and private agreements and common law. Next slide, please. Uh, customs emerge, as I mentioned, from self-organizing, uh, markets and private agreements from buyers and sellers coming off from variation and selection, court cases and judges and appeals courts. Next slide, please. Now, all these are emergent, oops, all of the, next, last slide, please. These are emergent, inescapable, open-ended, doesn't try to predict everything that's going to happen. Many actors and decision makers make the systems hard to corrupt. Next slide, please. Now, imposed regulations, statutes, regulatory agencies, and executive orders rest on top of this foundation of organic regulation uh, and interact with it. Next slide, please. These uh, emerge and evolve by new bills introduced, negotiated, and voted, uh, uh, and uh, agencies and politicians and so forth. Next slide, please. Uh, they don't evolve smoothly, the imposed regulations. Rather, they er evolve erratically and accumulate and Central decision-making provides a single point of failure and vulnerability to corruption. So the more we can make use of organic regulation, the less likely we are to have these disadvantages. Next, please. Common law and civil law, that is the statutory law, are analogous to exploration and standardization. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, the exploration exploitation model is well established in biology, corporate strategy, and other elsewhere. Uh, an animal looks for food. When it finds food, it stays in that location and enjoys the food. Uh, we don't o drill for oil or gas anywhere. We search for it, and then when we find a good place, then we drill there. Uh, we don't just build a manufacturing plant. We do market research to make sure there's a fit between the market and the product. Then we scale up. Uh, so uh, exploration and learning informs standardization and scaling. Now, our goal is to optimize something, survival, revenue, prediction, whatever. There's no single optimal trade-off in, in the real world between these two. And in fact, the more dynamic the environment, the more we have to continue to explore indefinitely. And the, more, the greater risk there is to standardize prematurely because uh, things may change. Well, common law and civil law, that is in organic versus imposed regulation, are very analogous to this model. We learn from common law. We discover what is right for the society. And then when it's appropriate to standardize whatever we've learned and scale it up, uh, then we can uh, instantiate that as statutory law. But the more that we instantiate, the harder it is to change and uh, the less dynamic the society is. Next slide, please. 
So what are uh, what implications does this have for uh, the liberal ended constitution and uh, law and regulation? Well, first, make the constitution a minimal kernel of guarantees of freedom, such things as speech, free trade, currency, labor, capital and property. Separate the state from church, economics, education, provide for dispute resolution, either public or private. Define and extend private property broadly, as the liberal Atlantic uh, Constitution does. First, uh, to minimize tragedies of the commons. Uh, So, for example, the ground under your land and the airspace above your property could well be part of the private property that liberal land uh, uh, defines. Don't don't try to predefine criminal offenses. Rather, let them emerge from from uh, human right and property right dispute resolutions in the court of law. And let the law evolve with society, customs, technology, and uh, the economy. You know, in the United States, we spend a huge amount on regulation and relatively modestly on courts of law to resolve disputes and to create a database in history through which we learn what works for the society and doesn't work. What if the two were reversed? What if we spent uh, most of our uh, judicial and, and legal funding on making sure we had a system of courts that worked very efficiently and uh, uh, could resolve disputes very uh, rapidly uh, and relatively less on regulation. We'd be much better off overall. Next, please. Now, when statutes are more cost effective and scalable, let them reflect common law. Make them responsive, not prescriptive. Focus on objectives, not specifications. Uh, Start generally uh, and evolve the statutes over time to reflect common law cases and norms and provide large spaces for learning and freedom so that people can still experiment next and, and, and learn. And so we can learn what works for the society as technology and the economy changes. Next, please. Uh, Here's a chart that may be helpful, Uh, and I won't go through the whole thing, but it talks about uh, the the influences, gives examples and and dynamics of both organic law and different types of imposed regulations. Those that are well informed by real world experience, that is, that are based on the uh, body of, of common law and informed by it and simply codifications of it. Uh, for example, tort and contract law uh, in the U.S. is an example of this. And bef- criminal law was as well before uh, three strikes came in uh, late in the last century. Uh, uh, others are, are relatively less uh, informed or uninformed or ill-informed. Uh, and so the more we can, and here are examples of each of those, so the more we can take advantage of uh, either organic or use well-informed uh, imposed regulations, the better. Next, please. For any new liberal landic law or regulation, uh, make it precise and specific, bound its applicability, limit the number of words or pages, or else people won't be able to anticipate. First of all, they won't read it. And second, they won't be able to anticipate its unintended consequences. Uh, even if there is a law, Create, if possible, a regulation-free zone within liberal land to which the law does not apply. Make it a special economic zone. That will let us better uh, assess the impact of that regulation and better ensure continued innovation. Perhaps require innovation impact assessments. Uh, And I, I elaborate that on an article that I'll share with you in just a moment. Test on a small scale first, use sunset clauses, that is any regulation has to end within a period of time, perhaps five years. And if we want to extend it after the five years, we have to reassess it at that time in the context of the economy, society, and technology that is available at that time. And whenever possible, use organic regulation rather than imposed regulation instead. Next, please. All of these uh, ideas are discussed at great length in this article in the International Journal of Entrepreneurship and Small Business. Uh, And uh, the uh, uh, URL of the article is is listed there. Thank you so much for having me. I am thrilled by what you're doing. As again, it is wonderful to be here with so many like-minded fellow thinkers and travelers. 
I wish you the best and congratulations to Liberland on your sixth anniversary.